try to give you the, the concise story. Um, I was studying deeply. When I, when I first became a Christian, I, I dove deep into it. Um, I, I was like a drastic conversion, so it wasn't a, a gradual thing. It's like I, I converted and my life just spun around. And uh, at, at the time, I never believed in hell. One, like from the beginning, I never believed in hell. And I had a strange experience when I was younger. I was dealing drugs. I was involved in a lot of illegal things. And I came out of the house with a friend of mine and a pastor. I'm assuming he was a pastor, he was a Christian with a Bible. And a, a young kid with him, maybe 10 years old, walked up to me. And he was like, excuse me, gentlemen, to me and my friend. He's like, would you like to know where you're going when you die for eternity? And my friend was like, no. You know, we don't need to know. And I was like, yeah, tell me, like, where am I going? And he opened his Bible and he said, if you don't believe in Jesus, did you know that you're going to burn in hell for eternity? And he pointed at the scripture and I said, let me see, let me see that. And he showed it to me and he literally had crossed out whatever the Bible had said. And I don't know what scripture it was. And over the top of it wrote, like above it, wrote burn in hell eternity. And I thought he was playing, you know, so I kind of laughed and I was like, that's not what that says. You wrote that in or somebody wrote that in. And he's like, but that's what it means. And I was like, but that's not what that says. And he clicked his Bible closed and he was like, good luck in eternity, gentlemen, like, and turned around and walked away. And I remember like the anger from that. And I thought like, whatever that is, if that's Christianity, I will never be that. Like, I will never be that, you know? And, uh, and just the concept of an eternal punishment for a temporary life, even as a teenager, that di didn't compute. So anyway, now fast forward, I become a Christian, which I never thought I would become. And I, that still kind of bothered me, but I thought, well, I just don't understand this. I'll just be quiet and learn. And so the first church I started going to, I was learning, I was taking notes. Every sermon I was taking notes. I was going to the night meetings, to the Bible studies, you know, and, and it wasn't adding up to me still. You know, the, the wages of sin are death. But somehow that turns into eternal life and torment. And I didn't understand it. So I had put, it, put together a bunch of scriptures and a bunch of things I wanted to ask the pastor about. And one night at a Friday night service, I had asked him about it. And he got very, like, displeased with me. And, you know, and I asked him humbly. I said, hey, I got some questions about this, about eternal punishment. It's not making sense to me. Could we go through these scriptures together? And he, he like looked at me and, and he was insulted. And he, he was like, you're not a pastor. And I was like, you know, what does that mean? I just have some questions. And it was hilarious how God works. Because as he's like punishing me for asking him this question, his wife walks up. She didn't know any of this was happening. She walks up and she's like, hey, babe. Let's invite Mars over for dinner tonight. Are you free tonight for dinner? And I was like, yup, I can come over, you know? And so anyway, that night I went over with all these scriptures and he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he didn't even let me ask him one scripture. He brought me into their bedroom, like away from the other people. He sat me down and he said, now I need you to, to answer me. Are you willing to take what I say as truth and follow me when I tell you something? And I was like, no. Like, absolutely not. If it's not lining up to what I can read myself, I will not. And he said the same thing he said to me at the church. He said, you're not a pastor. And I said, but I could read. And after that night, he asked me to, to find another church. So just for questioning it, just for asking, hey, explain this to me. This is not making sense to me. He didn't kick me out of the church, but he asked, he said, I think, I think you should find another church. And I, I was like, oh, you're right, I should. So as I was looking for another church, the, his under pastor started his own church. And I went and I met with him. He had actually reached out to me. And uh, I asked him the same question, you know, the, the couple questions that I had. And he was like, those are good questions. I don't know. How about we figure it out? We just, you know, come to the church. We'll, we'll build up this church and we figure it out together. And I was like, yeah, great. And so as we were doing that, I was leading a community group. I was, I was studying with other uh, people that I respected, 
You know, one of, one of them was, his name is Sam Shamoon, and this is how I came to what I believe now. And one night at Bible study, I asked Sam, who I respect as a theologian, I was like, hey, I'm having some issues with hell. What's your position on it? And he told me his position was expanding, but he, he believed that probably the correct version was annihilation. And he gave me the name of a man named uh, Edward Fudge. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. And he said, watch some of his videos and see you know, what you think. And so I started studying Edward Fudge and annihilation. And it made more sense to me you know, that the wages of sin are death. They will be as if they never were. You know, um, and, and I loved Edward Fudge. I think he's like an amazing human being. And, and he was so genuine when he would speak on these things. And as I was watching his videos, this one video kept popping up in my suggested you know, section, and it was Peter Hyatt. And the title of it was, was something to the effect of how, how a Christian evangelist became a Christian universalist. Something to that effect. And I saw it a bunch of times, and the first thing I thought was like, what a nut job this guy is. Like, I'm not clicking on your video, crazy guy. And uh, the irony is I got to meet him and let him know that I thought that about him at first. So after a couple weeks of watching, his video kept popping up randomly. And one night I clicked it. I just thought like, what, is, what does he have to say? I clicked it. And I sat there like mesmerized as what he was saying made all my questions, like all the scriptures that I couldn't understand and all the ways that scripture was kind of contradicting each other it just all of a sudden lined up. It was like all these pieces just clicked together and I saw it and, I, and it just completely transformed my view of God, about people, about life. And that, that was what started me then looking deeper, studying other people. Like the next book, the, the next thing that I learned from, at first I just started Googling it, you know, like seeing what people had to say and, and seeing both sides, because obviously there's there's always two sides to the story. And I just started getting deeper, deeper into, into studying and realizing scriptures that I've used against people were actually teaching universal salvation. And I, I'll give you one example. Uh, my family, half of my family is Muslim. So I'm, a, I'm born a Muslim son, which is kind of a big deal in Islam. And my wife's whole family is Muslim. And so when when I first converted, because I had such a drastic conversion, I wasn't quiet about it, a lot of, I received a lot of pushback from the Muslim community, from my Muslim friends, and from my, the Muslim side of my family. And so I would have these debates, and I, and I would meet up with, with my friends' imams. You know, sometimes multiple people would be me against six Muslim people, you know, some friends, a guy that has a, Islamic uh, YouTube channel that's incredibly popular with millions of views on each one of his videos and then a couple Imams and they were trying to show me where I went wrong as at becoming a Christian. So I would debate them and I would finish the debate by saying like whoever was the main guy, I would shake his hand, look him in the eyes and say every knee will bend and every tongue will confess Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. I see you there when you're doing that. And it was kind of a threat. Do you know what I mean? Like I was, I was using it to threaten them and um, not realizing what that scripture was actually saying. It's not a threat. It's a promise, you know? And I, I saw that later after I started, the Bible just started opening up to me, just seeing all the places that I've read dozens, perhaps hundreds of times as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. I don't know how many times I heard that scripture not realizing all will be made alive. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. It's the same all. And so it's, it's really amazing how we can be blind and we could be saying things and reading things and proclaiming things and not see what we're saying. And actually afterwards, after I, I was already a, uni, a Christian Universalist for a while, and I was still doing concerts, but kind of in the closet, you know? I would make sure at, at churches when I would perform or speak, I would make sure I wasn't saying too much, 
you know, and it started being a problem holding back. I had to like in my head start contemplating what am I going to say so they don't find out I actually believe Jesus is greater than they think he is and they kick me out of their church, you know, and, uh, and I would hear them saying it. I would hear them saying, you know, every, every knee will bend and every tongue will confess Christ is Lord. And people are like, yeah, yes, they will. And I was like, wow, we don't even know what we're actually proclaiming because they don't believe that, you know. And I think the majority of Christianity doesn't actually believe that, you know. So that was the beginning of my, my journey into Christian universalism.